Now on this channel, we discuss the idea of creating a watch collection from a lot of different perspectives. Maybe it's based on price. Maybe it's looking at an occupation. We've done videos about that in the past or looking at a watch for a particular type of persona. But what I wanted to do today was kind of create a, I don't know how realistic of a scenario this would be, but a fun way of looking at building a two watch collection. So how we're gonna look at this, we're gonna have five different personas in this video. We'll go through each persona and really the goal is have one expensive watch that will match that persona and then have a less expensive watch that can't be at least 10% of the value of the expensive uh, counterpart that will be a part of that collection. But before we jump into this video, definitely check out our blog, look at the top watches of 2021. Essentially just a snapshot of a lot of the models that were released during the calendar year. If you wanna get an idea of what was released, you know what's out there, what should be on your radar, definitely would recommend checking that out. Link will be in the description. Now for our first persona here, this is one that we've certainly used on the channel in the past, and that is with the Diver Fanatic persona. This is somebody who's obsessed with all things dive watches, they can't get enough of them, or they're just really focused or interested in dive watch history and like to really remain true uh, to that side of the history and element of watchmaking. So to begin here, looking at the high-end watch for a dive watch fanatic, it's kind of being that cornerstone of the collection. I think it's important for someone that's into dive watches, sure, they might be spending more money in this instance, but to remain true to what I would still say is dive watch DNA, not getting so much into the world of of uh, needing to get into hype and just flair with the luxury product or experience that's gonna be provided with the watch here. And I think the best example of that is with the Blanc Pond 50 Fathoms. I see the Blanc Pond 50 Fathoms as the Rolls Royce ghost of dive watches. But while the Rolls Royce Ghost might be foregoing some of the practicality in the day to day, the Blanc Pond absolutely does not. And when you're talking about actually having true history in the area of dive watches, it really doesn't get much richer than that of Blanc Pond. When the 50 Fathoms was released in 1953, it really was the watch that almost set the standard for a lot of the dive watch design attributes that we know of today. High legibility, great illuminating material on the dial, elapsed time bezel along the outside to an externally rotating format, and water resistance ratings that would allow it to be suitable in a variety of different difficult environments. Blanc Pond 50 Fathoms delivers that, and I think when you're talking about somebody that has that itch to scratch, as someone who's very into the history of dive watches, likes to also get a luxury experience with their dive watch, and looking at that kind of mold that we're trying to have here with this video, I just think it's the obvious choice for this type of persona. Now for our next watch here, we wanna look at something that's going to be not more than 10% of the total value of our more expensive option. So that's going to eliminate things that might be obvious choices like a Doxa Sub 300. But another watch that, and we're talking about diver pedigree at least, that needs to be mentioned, or at least they have the history in that field, is Zodiac. In 1953, a lot of people, of course, just naturally think of the Blanc Pond 50 Fathoms. They think about the Rolex Submariner being classic watches released during this period. But then you also have the Zodiac Seawolf, which really is one of the most beloved dive watches when you're talking about mid 20th century dive watch design and also having its own just a DNA in the process. Now the Zodiac Seawolf didn't really become beloved until a couple decades later in the 1960s and 70s. One of the popular reasons behind this was their availability at PXs during the Vietnam War that really helped spur on a lot of just general interest in the brand even further. And the watch that we have here that we're looking at is a newer reference from the Zodiac Super Seawolf family that actually goes back and looks at that original 1953 design. And I think it's very tasteful with kind of this very simple and non-color format that deviates from the typical norm of Zodiac from a modern perspective, certainly. The reference here is the Z09 213. This watch comes in at a price range just south of $1,300, but very wearable dimensions of 39 millimeters with its case, lug to lug dimension of 48 millimeters, and an automatic STP movement on the inside. Swiss made watch with a sapphire crystal, and I just like the looks of these pieces. When you're talking about wearability, these are great. And I also think this is in alignment with somebody that would be into dive watches to find something in this general price range, and I think complements the Blanc Pond 50 Fathoms quite well. So our next persona here is the hipster, and this is another reoccurring uh, persona on this channel. And this is someone that wants to go for an unconventional type of execution, either through the creation of the watch, the material, or just the brand itself, and maybe not being one of the mainstream types of 
just options that people would generally go for. So to start us off here, I want to look at something that's a little bit out there, both with execution and also maybe with brand, and that is with the Moser and MBNF Endeavor Cylindrical Turbion. So this watch is absolute craziness in a dome sapphire crystal. It was the winner of the GPHG Audacity Prize, and unlike some of the odd winners from the show, this one could not be more on the money. The watch is housed within a heavily dome sapphire crystal on top that offers a three-dimensional view of a flying turbion cage and the tall cylindrical hairspring set within. However, in this instance, time telling is done by a propped up piece of sapphire oriented at 45 degrees and is going to also be fully loomed. And that includes the hands, that includes the markers and the logo. The thickness of this thing is around 19 millimeters and more than half of that is going to come from the dome sapphire crystal. It is absolute craziness. And I think for somebody that is really uh, maybe going towards this type of persona would be interested in something like this. This is not a watch that's going to be practical by any means, but it does get attention and it just looks like a spaceship on the wrist. There's really no other way to put it. Now, one of the case materials that we've been seeing a bit more of in the luxury segment is ceramic. But when you're talking about ceramic as a material to create a case out of it, it typically is going to be priced uh, in a way that's going to make a lot of people unable to actually make it happen for themselves. But one brand that is doing a really good job with utilizing ceramic, and ceramic as a material is not mainstream by any means, maybe more with bezel inserts and things of that sort, uh, but to create an entire case of ceramic as well as a bracelet is certainly a tough task. But when looking at a brand that does it well at a price range that is very appropriate, you have to look at Rado as really a master of the material. So our choice here for the other hipster category, more on the execution of uh, the case material and just how the watch looks is the high-tech ceramic Captain Cook. Now there are several different variations of this model, but really the defining characteristics are going to be that ghosted central dial portion, a full ceramic case and bracelet, 300 meters of water resistance, and a domed effect of a crystal and inward set bezel that really is going to be the defining characteristics of this line. This watch is going to be on the larger end of things, but when you look around the industry at ceramic uh, cases, you can look at the likes of Omega or even Tudor, which is even for them pretty cost effective in terms of the competition. This is going to undercut that by quite a considerable margin uh, for what this watch is bringing in a format that really has become the new model DNA for the brand and the Captain Cook. So now for our next persona, we have the check off the boxes individual. Now, typically when we use this persona, this is going to be an individual that's going to strive to have every single scenario covered. But in this instance, we only have two available slots to be able to cover all those scenarios. So with that being the case, we're gonna to have to really stretch and think of some watches that could allow this to uh, actually take place. And for that, I think where we have to make compromises is like looking at the dress watch or everyday category or sports watch and try to find something that's going to walk that line. And I think still, even to this day, the best example of this is the Rolex Explorer uh, when you're talking about a luxury perspective. Now, when it comes to price, uh, we can just kind of keep this open because we're not really confined by price, at least with our luxury watch. But the pre-owned market with these watches has gone a little bit crazy. But with the return back to 36 millimeters with the new 124270, to some, this is very welcome. To others, they are a little upset that 39 millimeters is no longer going to be offered. But for myself, I think the Explorer is just one of those lines that is able to navigate around a lot of the current situation of Rolex at the moment with it being more of a luxury brand for luxury sake rather than a watchmaker anymore. Uh, they still, of course, make great watches, but uh, they are in a situation right now with the demand of their brand that is very difficult to not lean into that from their perspective. This watch comes with the new automatic Rolex movement, the 3230 with that extended power reserve. Again, coming down to a pretty condensed case size, 36 millimeters with a 43.1 millimeter lug to lug dimension and a water resistance rating of 100 meters. So you have everything covered there. I think the great thing about the Explorer is all the other sports watches followed what the Explorer dial kind of created. That includes the Submariner. If you look at early Submariner references, this honestly, sometimes despite all the love going towards other references nowadays, I think people still have appreciation for the Explorer and its timelessness, but in terms of hype and appreciating value, which I know that's for me not really what it's all about, but this doesn't really happen in the direction of the Explorer as much as you might think, considering how absolutely influential it was for not only Rolex, but the entire industry. 
But with the Rolex Explorer kind of sitting in that everyday, but also watch that can also work in the dressy type scenario, we have to look at another watch that's going to lean really far into the sports watch uh, type of environment that can also take a beating. And for that, I wanna look at the Seiko King Turtle, the SRPE03. So I'm a big fan of this design. I know some people might not like the waffle style pattern of the dial, but I think it adds to the intrigue. You have a ceramic bezel along the outside. And although these are going to have broad dimensions at 45 millimeters with the diameter here, the lug to lug is going to make this watch wear closer to that of a 41 to 42 millimeter case. It does feature sapphire crystal, but unfortunately does not include the 6R35 that does have that extended power reserve. This is going to be a little bit more towards the end of kind of that entry level professional product Prospects dive watch in terms of the movement. But still, when complementing what's going on with the Rolex, I think this is a nice kind of hybrid of being able to check off pretty much every single scenario that you might have in your life. Now, next up, we have the formal collector. So this is an individual that is really valuing dress watches and maybe dresses in more formal attire on a day-to-day -day basis for their job, or they just like to dress the part uh, every single day. So for this, we're looking at two different styles of dress watches. One should lean into more of the traditional dress watch that can really look the part in that area. But then you also will have another side where maybe you need some more just casual type of versatility with some use of loom or things of that sort. For first watch here, I wanna mention the Glassuta Original Panamatic Lunar. This watch to me is one of the best finished movements that you are going to find for $10,000 without question on the market. Now the obvious type of affiliation people will have for this watch is comparing it to the Longa One is kind of a more attainable version of that. Now that's not necessarily untrue, but I also think this watch delivers more than just that. But if you do just get into the idea of that concept, it's going to deliver around 85 to 90% of the movement finishing of a Longa One one for around 20% of the price. It's not all there, but you're getting that beautiful engraved skeletonized rotor, finishing across all the bridges. This thing just looks the part, and this is as good as it gets for $10,000 without question. And that's including the likes of JLC and a lot of other brands that I respect. There are some independents that might give it a run for its money, but to come from a mainstream brand, or at least part of a main group in the Swatch group and to produce a movement like this and a watch like this, it is absolutely one of the best in class. So now with that watch coming in just south of $10,000, we need something that's gonna come south of $1,000 for our inexpensive choice to complement our expensive choice in this collection. And for that, I wanna look at a brand that I believe is one of the more overlooked brands or underappreciated brands in terms of watchmaking, and that is with FC Frederic Constant with the Classic Index. So this might not demonstrate everything that FC does well, but it still is a great package for under $1,000 in terms of its design. And I also think it does offer up some casual undertones with its approach. This is available in a couple of different dial variations. I think the white silver is gonna offer the most amount of versatility. Swiss made movement on the inside in a price range that's really attractive. You're looking at $895 for this watch. Wearable dimensions of 40 millimeters, 10.5 millimeters with the thickness. Water resistance isn't great, but it does offer 50 meters. And that lug to lug, 46.5 millimeters. But now for our last choice, we have the two extremes. And for this, we want a really perfect dichotomy. We want something that is crazy dressy, and then we want the ultimate type of beater watch that we don't have to worry about at all. Now, when I think of Timeless Elegance, a watch that comes to mind quite a bit is with the JLC Reverso. And we're gonna look at the Tribute Small Seconds. You can go for pretty much any dial color here that you want. If you wanna have some more fun, maybe go for the green or the burgundy red as a way to kinda of just create a little bit more of a statement. But I think the most timeless of all the dial colors is going to be the blue dial variant. And it has more of a sunburst effect, I, I've noticed compared to the other dial colors uh, from this collection. There are quite a bit of different case formats and sizes when it comes to the Reverso. This is gonna wear closest to that grand case style from the Reverso family. And I also like how it marries, not going too far away from the classic 1931 design, but then also incorporates some modern wearability. It's gonna be good for, I would say, smaller to medium-sized wrist. If you have a larger wrist, I'd be probably going for something like the Duo Face, because that's gonna have a bit of a broader stature across the wrist, and you get the upside of having two different uh, dials with the watch itself. 
So you have timeless elegance with the reverse on one, one side. What's the best way to complement it as the complete opposite? To me, I think you have to look at the Casio Oak, or what many people will call. This is an analog digital style watch for $110 that it just looks great and there's a reason why these are best sellers. I think this was a amazing new release when these were unveiled around 2019 towards the end of that year. People just went nuts for these things. And I think that was for good reason. It brings a lot of the same elements that people love from a traditional, say, like DW5600 G-Shock and infuse that within uh, a resin style case that also has a analog display. So it marries those two ideas in a very nice cohesive package. And on top of all of that, apart from the looks and how it's positioned, you have pretty wearable case. It's not gonna overstep on even smaller wrists. If, as long as you just keep in mind what the intended purpose of a watch like this is, it's going to be rather wearable. Also comes with a variety of different functions that are pretty traditional, stopwatch, world time, multi-alarm system. You also have a calendar function to the year 2099 and 200 meters of water resistance. So there is gonna be some great utility in that regard, all for $110. But all right, guys, that is my video here today, looking at five different personas, looking at an expensive watch and a less expensive watch and bringing it together to create a full collection with just two watches. If you enjoyed this concept, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe and hit the bell icon, really would appreciate that. If you didn't like this concept, well, you know, just wanted to have some fun towards the end of the year. I thought this was something that it just allows us to think outside of the box and outside of just the conventional uh, what ifs. And you know, it was a lot of fun to put together. Also be sure to check out teddybaldasar.com, full authorized dealer of over 30 brands, quick and fast fulfillment, dedicated customer support, also offer a full factory warranty for all the products that we offer. And how this content is all made possible is through the sale of watches on our store. So apart from getting a great watch, you can also support the content. If you wanna stay up to date with the content, be sure to follow on Instagram, see some cool photos of watches in the process as well. But guys, thank you again so much for watching. Be well, and I'll see you all very soon.